Half a day in San Manana Sitsu is. The Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self Determination, and Regional Affairs now convenes this public hearing. Public hearing notices were given to the media. The first notice was on Thursday, May 23rd, 2019, and the second notice was on Monday, May 27th, 2019, and Wednesday, May 29th, uh, 2019. So for the record, today is Friday, May 31st, 2019, and the time is now 8.35. Notices sent out for this morning's confirmation hearing include the following. Confirmation hearing of Patricia Ann P. Ada to serve on the Board of Commissioners for the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, and confirmation hearing of Joaquin A. Bellis to serve as the youth member on the Board of Commissioners, Department of Parks and Recreation. Joining me for this uh, public hearing, uh, there may be senators who join later. They are currently in a meeting altogether right now, but they may be coming out after that meeting and joining us. The conduct of this public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying will be recognized in the order of sign-up on the sign-in sheet. Written testimony may be read Lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide our legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once. Once you are done, you may be asked to remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony as may be desired by the members of the panel. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on. There's a small button here. And that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name clearly into the microphone for the record before you begin with the actual testimony. We will now begin to hear testimonies on the confirmation hearing of Patricia Ann P. Ada to serve on the Board of Commissioners, Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. So for those that have signed up, we have uh, Stasha Sinicolis, the HRRA Executive Director, Lassia Kassil, and Ms. Patricia Ann Ada herself. So if you can go ahead and be seated here, and then what we will do is we will listen to those providing testimony and support, and then we will hear from Ms. Ada uh, after that testimony. Hello? Okay. Hafidei, Madam Chair. My name is Patricia Ann P. Ada, and I come from the village of Tumuning. I am the daughter of Pedro Palomo Ada and Faye Perez Ada. Oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Dispensa Tzu. Uh, if we could hear from the others, and then oh. kind of traditionally, um, and we save the person being confirmed oh, okay. for last, mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to ask questions of all of you. But it's so good that you're here, and we're excited to see that you're ready to go. <laughs> so thank you for that enthusiasm. Uh, first, we'll go here, ahead and hear from uh, Ms. Stasha Sinicolas, who signed up first. And I also want to recognize uh, Mr. Sunny Ada, who is here as well to testify. But Ms. Uh, Stasha Sinicolas. Manana Sizuus, Madam Chair. I am Stasha Senicolas from the village of Jigo. I have 16 years, over 16 years of experience in the radio sales and advertising industry. I have worked with many businesses in the private sector as well as the government of Guam. 
I am also an eight-year veteran, having served as a supply specialist in the United States Army Reserve headquarters. I received my BA in communications from the University of Guam in 1998. I graduated from the Academy of Our Lady of Guam in 1983. It seems like only yesterday, running through the halls of AOLG, that I first met Ms. Patricia Ada. We were classmates that have become lifelong friends and family. I'm here today to give verbal testimony to the character as she has been given and accepts the responsibilities associated with being a member of the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Board. Patty is the daughter of Pedro and Faye Ada of Chimuni, founders of Ada's Trust and Investment, which is only one of the many investments they made. His daughter, Patty, grew up under her father's, as his daughter, Patty grew up under his father's wing, sharing a strong relationship that led to her joining him in running the family business alongside her brother, Sonny, and sister, Teresa. Patty became an integral part of Addis Trust and Investment as she learned day to day from one of Guam's most successful and highly respected businessmen, her father a man who had a strong sense of obligation to family, faith, and our island. Mr. Pedro Ada invested not only his time and money into real estate from Jigo to Hagatnya, but he also invested generously in our people and our island community. He built Ada's trust and investment to a successful family business that is now in the capable hands of his children. As Patty and her siblings carry on the legacy left behind by their father, you can rest assured that as a member of the board of directors, Patty will bring insightful knowledge and experience to the discussions about responsible and sustainable growth while preserving and protecting Hagatnya's rich history. She is honest, trustworthy, loyal, and dependable. She has also served on the board of directors of the Bank of Guam for many years. This added knowledge and experience will benefit greatly and assist the Agatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority complete its mission. As she accepts this position with the Board of Directors, she will be following in her father's footsteps in giving back to the community and the village of Agatnya. Thank you for your time. Sainama Asi for that testimony. Next, we will hear from the Executive Director of the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, Ms. Lassia Kassil. Manana Sujus, uh, Madam Chair. Um, for the record, my name is Lassia Kassil, and I am the Executive Director of the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. I am here to testify in support of Ms. Patricia Ada to our Board of Commissioners. Um, First of all, I, I would like to say thank you um, to yourself and to um, the legislature for confirming um, our board members yesterday. Um, one of the key components of the master plan uh, written in the law is um, the direction to create economic opportunities in Hagatnya. And as a business owner and a landlord here in Hagatnya, I think Ms. Ada brings a lot to the table with this experience, working with local businesses, helping them to open up here in Agatnya. Just uh, for example, Mighty Purple Crowns, the Carabao Brewery are just a few of, of their tenants that are contributing to the, the, the um, elevation, raising up um, this, this part of, the, of, of our island. Um, one of the things that we've spoken about is the education process for the Hagatnya Master Plan. It, it's a living document that has evolved over 25 years, and um, I know that she said she's had, she, she's excited to learn about it. And um, you know, we're very excited as a board uh, with her on it, working with um, yourself and the legislature of getting all the information out there to the public and all the stakeholders so that we can make the right decisions. Um, so 
I know, and I, I spoke with the governor, Magahaga, on Wednesday about this, and she's very excited about it, too, uh, in supporting this nomination. Um, if, if, and um, I, I look forward to the confirmation. Thank you. Sujus Maasi, uh, it's always good, of course, to hear from the executive director and hear that support for a potential board member. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is uh, allow Mr. Ada to testify next, and then we'll be hearing from the uh, person up for a confirmation hearing. So, Mr. Ada. Thank you, Senator. Nice to see you again. Good morning. I came here for moral support initially, and, um, but, you know, I have to say I've worked with my, uh, my sister for about 20 years, so I know her professionally as well. And uh, I'm happy that she's accepted to, um, to uh, serve on this board. Um, we, we live in Tamuning, but we've come to Aganya five days a week for, the, for forever. So this is also part of our home. Um, I know Patty's a, um, um, will be an asset to the commission. She's very dedicated. She's knowledgeable. She's honest. And she, she gets into anything she gets into, not just, uh, not just uh, for a title or for any other reason. But, but I've seen her dedication at work. I've seen her dedication on, as she serves on the board of directors of the Bank of Guam. And um, again, I really think she'll be a, an asset to the, uh, the commission as um, she knows very well Aganya and seen Aganya develop, uh, and uh, we, our company, we, we've developed along with it. Um, and I, I'm, I'm excited to hear what the plans are and what contributions she can uh, put forth in having this uh, Gatnia restoration, uh, redevelopment restoration plan move forward. Uh, a great example um, is this Guam Micronesia, Guam Micronesia Island Fair that's ongoing now. I think it's just uh, um, it's it's uh, an example of an, another example, I should say, of what a Ganya can become, the, the liveliness that it that, that and and gathering point that it that it is. Uh, so, from Chamorro Village to the museum to events like the Guam Micronesia, Guam Micronesia Island Fair, um, a Ganya is very much poised to. Um, to continue to welcome not just visitors but residents to to gather and I think uh, um, allowing uh, 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 this allowing this commission to showcase Aganya is 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 just overall great for the island. So um, again, I I'm very much in support of uh, Patty on the on the commission, and I hope the the senators see that as well. Thank you. Sainama Asi for your testimony. And now Ms. Uh, Patricia Ada will hear from you. And oops, Hafade, Madam Chair and Senator Terlahi. My name is Patricia Ann P. Ada and I come from the village of Tamuning. I am the daughter of Pedro Paloma Ada and Faye Perez Ada. I'm also a mother to two children, Andrea Ada and Eric Tanaka. I am, the president, I am the vice president and secretary of the board for my family's business, Addis Trust and Investment Inc. I have been working there for 27 years. Our family business runs commercial real estate and property development and management for office, retail, and restaurant space rentals. I handle the overall financial management for the company, but our office of four employees all work hand in hand to keep our tenants happy everything to cater to the needs of keeping their spaces well maintained and tending to repairs that are required to keep their businesses running smoothly. We handle a couple of land leasing leases as well to businesses catering to the tourist industry. I am also a director at the Bank of Guam. I have been on the board of directors for 11 years. I serve on various committees of the bank, which include the audit committee, executive committee, Asset and Liability Management, the Executive Committee, and the Employee Stock Purchase Plan. I am, a, I am proud to be a part of the Guam's local 
bank and have been excited to see the success of a local establishment that has reached a value of $2 billion, an accomplishment that is the only business I am aware of that has reached this worth and gain for a Guam establishment by Guamanians. I'm honored to have been asked to become a member of the Agatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. I have spent many years of my life in this beautiful city from the time I was a little girl going with my parents to their work at Addis Market, going to elementary school at Cathedral grade school and high school at the Academy of Our Lady of Guam. All my work experience has been in Agatnya, where my office is located and past jobs with Nambo, Bank of Guam, Mad Mel's, and RCA MCI. So I can say I know Hagatnya pretty well. In addition, more than half of our commercial space rentals are in Hagatnya. We take great pride in keeping our buildings looking good, and I believe our tenants feel proud as well as being in a nice location and building. We take special care to add value and easy access to the locations where our buildings are. It is my hope to make Hagatnya a city where our fellow Guamanians will be proud of and at the same time preserve our culture and beauty and appeal to our tourists as well as becoming, oh, and to our tourists as well. Becoming a member of HRRA will be a learning process, but one that I will feel proud and enthusiastic to contribute participate with the various government agencies to reach the goals of improving Hagatnya with economic growth, preserving the city's history, promoting tourism, and addressing community engagement and safety issues. Thank you. Siju Smasi for your testimony. I also want to recognize um, the Honorable Senator um, of Teresa Trilahi has joined us and Sidious Masi for being here, Senator. So now that we've run through the oral testimony, I'll go ahead and open it up to Senator Trilahi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you, Patty, for accepting this nomination. And um, I guess I just wanted to ask you a couple questions that I've asked some of the other nominees. So this is your first time on this HRRA board, right? It's my first time on any board for the government. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Um, are you familiar with the work they've done so far? Um, I've met with Leish Lassia this morning, and um, we've gone through some of the projects that are, that are coming up, and also we've discussed about the, this new legislature building and the Guam Museum, which are really nice. <laughs> All right, well, this, um, this authority, this uh, board has been, it has some of the strongest powers in the government, I think. It's got the power to condemn land, power to do it's, uh, many things. So it's a, it's a, some, you know, we have to trust the people on this board. So we're looking to you to really take care of the people of Agatnya, who are also you know, supposed to be included when the planning is done in, for Hagatnya and all the residents and all the landowners in Hagatnya. I think uh, we've spent millions of dollars on this planning, so you'll see the products. Uh, we've got many plans. The, the issue for me is that uh, we've spent millions of dollars on this and still we still have landowners and residents who are not included. And if you could just reach out to them, I think that that's something that you could really do very well to help this board to do that. The other thing is that um, the plan is so big, you know, it encompasses so many things that, um, but there's certain things that I feel like are fundamental that have to be decided. And if we're going to wait until we approve the entire plan, maybe that's, you know, one of the issues of why it's, it's being, it's taking a long time. Then, then lots of politics get involved, right? When you're trying to, to take care of everything all at once. But there's some, something that seems fundamental to me, and that's, that's the flood mitigation. And I feel like if that's something that this commission needs to look at, re-examine, and decide again first, right? Are we really gonna go forward with this flood mitigation plan the way they have it? 
because that in itself is a huge um, undertaking. You need to find whether we're going to have funding to do that, and it reconfigures Hagatnya because of flood mitigation, I think. So that's one of the core issues that I would just ask the board to, to look at and, and consider I mean, I know the statute says you're going to do a master plan and then you're going to send it you know, to the governor, tend to the legislature. And supposedly they're close to this, but, but I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be problematic unless you can really decide on each phase that is planned, flood mitigation and then some of the other things, right? Whether these are really core and whether they're really essential and maybe pare it down to what's essential and then what are add-ons right? Because you can't add on a flood mitigation. To me, that seems like you have to start with that and decide whether we're really going to do that or not. And there was, we've had uh, different budget hearings for this authority also, and they, they've come in with different ideas of how it would be funded. Some was saying, you know, Army Corps was going to help us fund that. I don't remember all the details. I don't have them in front of me. But look at that again and see how realistic that is, because that's, that's kind of what I want to know. Are we really going to go forward with that flood mitigation plan? And if we are, everybody in Hagatnya better know that because that's really, um, it creates a lot of change, I think. And so, and then there, there are other things. So just, uh, I would just suggest pr approach it that way because um, the big, huge master plan, of course, it looks beautiful, but it doesn't, you know, looking at that beautiful video doesn't really make you realize that that means you're going to, you know, change somebody's, property line because you have to put in these flood mitigation systems, things like this. But um, I guess I wanted, yeah, just to, to suggest that to you and to make sure that you are fair to all the landowners in Agania. That's another thing because the board has huge powers. We want, we want, try to include as many as you can and try to be fair to all of them as much as possible. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a learning process, but I'm willing to learn and contribute what I can to the to this authority. Appreciate that. Thank you. Sisus Masi, Senator, I think you, well, not think, I know, you, you brought forward many important points. I also want to recognize that former speaker Joaquin Ariola is here, and we appreciate him coming down to be part of the processes today. One of the things I want to start off with noting is that uh, yesterday was a very exciting day and I appreciate that the executive director noted it, that uh, for the first time in perhaps a long time, we have an impaneled board of commissioners. So as we move forward with this hearing and it going through the processes, uh, you will be joining an impaneled board and you will be able to be meeting together and making real decisions and uh, really moving the project forward, which we're all excited for. I also want to note that uh, Senator Tello Taidegui is here. So um, perhaps what I'll do is I'll, I'll mention a few things that I had in comments, but I'll save my questions for after she asks any or provides any comments that she may have. So as has been mentioned, this is a project that's been going on for 20, 25 years, uh, beginning informally and then becoming formal. And so there's a, a large learning curve there. There's understanding the context of how it began in all the different phases, and that's something that the administration, once they got in, us new legislators, once we've gotten in, the new board members, uh, the new executive director, and so forth, it's something for us all to be continually learning about because it provides us that baseline data of understanding just the, the project and its goals and how to move it forward in its entirety. So as oversight chair, I'm definitely here to support you. We've worked very diligently at making sure to get the public hearings uh, scheduled and to put out the committee reports and get the nominees onto the floor so that they can be voted in. 
Another part of that is also to ensure that process, due process is followed. And that's something that we share with the executive director as well. And so that's part of what we're doing here today is ensuring that that due process is taking place. Um, I'll just mention, uh, as you have identified to a degree as well, that a main goal of this plan is to maximize both the historic potential, but then also the economic potential. And then there are a few other goals that it has as well. Well, many goals, but uh, some larger goals. And so when I circle back, um, I will be addressing some of those goals. Um, and, and seeing how your background, your experience can really help us actualize and implement some of those goals. But I'll go ahead and defer to Senator Talo Taidegui before I do that. Thank you, um, Madam uh, Chair. And I apologize for being late. Uh, we're all in another meeting, but I didn't want to miss this opportunity to say thank you, Patty, for stepping up to the plate and doing this. Um, I know you have a wealth of knowledge, definitely a, a good background. Uh, one of the things in this position that's really, um, I'm hoping that people bring to the table is the ability to find funding. And that's, that's the big you know, million dollar question, hence million dollars, uh, to make the project work. Um, so I, I know you have that, that uh, capacity and, and definitely you have that um, innovative thinking of getting that that done. So again, thank you so much for stepping up to this plate and my door is always open if you want to come visit and uh, talk more. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patty. So to Masi for that, uh, Senator Tsai, uh, see we have so many senators with a T for the last name, even I'm stumbling on them and I'm one of them. <laughs> Tai degree. <laughs> Um, and it's true, uh, the funding is going to be an important issue. It has been and it will be as we move forward. So uh, we hope that that's one of the areas that you and some of the other board members who have this financial background can be bringing with you. I want to start off by just noting that in the testimony provided by others, that they have mentioned all the things that are so important for us to look for or many of them, being honest, being trustworthy, loyal, dependable, dedicated, an asset, um, than some of the others, that you have this sense of community pride, that you are basically an unofficial ambassador for our island, that as a landlord you are quick to respond to needs, and that you work harmoniously with others. So, all of those speak very well to qualities that we would be looking for in a board member. So those are all very good to hear. One of the questions I would ask is one of those basic questions where we ask, we notice that, um, so while it's both a benefit that you are a business owner because you bring a certain type of expertise and knowledge with you, it's important for us to also understand if you've thought about this and how you will ensure that there's no conflict of interest as you carry out your duties. If you'd like to explain that for us, please. Um, well, I, the way I would approach it is I'm not, I, although we do have buildings in Aganya, I wouldn't look at it as something that we're just doing to benefit our business. I look at it as benefiting the community. And um, so with that in mind, I, I, I look at this as a different aspect to the responsibility for this authority. So I don't feel that there is a conflict of interest. It's not just about what we have here in Aganya, but it's also about taking pride in the island for that and it's important for us to hear that you have that larger community perspective uh, and that's important to you and, and I'm sure if there were anything 
um, that comes up specifically that you did identify or would be identified as a conflict of interest that you would recuse yourself for that part. But it's very good to hear about that larger community vision that you have and wanting to serve all of them and, and have that as something that you follow. Also, this appointment is a five-year appointment, and serving on a board takes time, it takes commitment, and that's where uh, your enthusiasm and some of the qualities here about you being dependable, about you being dedicated, uh, and about you seeing things through, I think, speak to that. Um, I believe you've served on other boards, so if you could just address that issue of uh, understanding it's a five-year commitment and um, perhaps having experience of putting in that kind of time that a board demands? Um, yes, I'm willing to put in the time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it, it will be a learning process for me, but I'm, I'm constantly learning things. Uh, I take classes, and so I think um, I'll do my best to do what I can to benefit this board and the island, and, um, and I'm willing to put in the dedication of five years. Sayna Ma'asi for that. And that is really important to hear. We've heard a lot of enthusiasm from the other nominees before you who are now board members, and so we have high hopes for the board being able to regularly reach quorum, and that's so important for being able to actually get work done, which the board needs and the authority needs, um, and then it benefits the whole community if you're meeting regularly, making quorum regularly, and able to be moving forward in a real way. So um, we just encourage everybody to be keeping that in mind, that that quorum, making that quorum is key. So the next thing that I have is just going back to some of the special experience and uh, skills that you bring with you. Being a landlord, I think, really helps you understand some of the issues. Um, being somebody who has that um, connection to Hagatnya in a variety of ways. <clears throat> Some of the goals that are listed in the enabling legislation for the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority and, and what it's supposed to be addressing is low-income housing and jobs for those that are jobless, perhaps even homeless, um, and those who are low-income. So these are really important goals for our entire community. Um, in the plan, they have provided for some housing and economic opportunities, but as a plan, it, it provides a certain amount of structure and guidance, but then it, that's where the strength of the board comes in in actually bringing that forward and, and figuring out how to make that a reality. Do you have any ideas um, at this point, and I realize it's very early on, uh, you're still at, at that beginning of the learning curve, but do you have any ideas of how we might go about ensuring that there is low-income housing in Hagatnya and that some of the jobs that are going to be made available are for those that may at that time be jobless or at the lower income end of the our society? That's something I'll have to do some research on. And it's, it's yeah, like, as you mentioned, I am, I am going to be new to this, but that's something I'm going to have to look into. Um, I think if there's like proposed developments, for example, I'd like to, I don't know if it's possible, but I, I'm thinking that maybe when these, de these developments are started that maybe we can add additional fees to, to cater to um, affordable housing and, and to provide jobs. Sijus Masi for that. As a 
researcher, I always respond well to the answer that you're willing to do some research and to really think about this issue. So uh, we look forward to that. And I think, as I mentioned, um, everybody on the board, I'm sure, has the ability to research that and be interested in that. And I think there are some of you, such as yourself, that come in that have some of that knowledge and perspective that can really help actualize some of those really important goals for the island. I mean, for Hagatna, yes, but for the island overall. So uh, that's very good to hear. And, <clears throat> excuse me, as Senator Terlahi was mentioning, we have things that are going to be important because they impact the plan and how it, we move forward. They have the upcoming, potentially, hydrological study that studies the river and how it might be mitigated for its flood zone and how that might change some of the footprint of the flood zone for Hagatnya. And then that ties into abilities to uh, insure homes or properties, uh, get loans. It ties into quite a variety of things. <clears throat> also, at some point, there's going to be a need perhaps um, to join the efforts of places such as Hawaii. Hawaii has done an impact study and has started planning for climate change and responding to sea level rise. Sea level rise is predicted to be about 3.2 feet in the upcoming years and so they're actually building, uh, or, excuse me, relocating some of their critical infrastructure, they're planning for the loss, perhaps, of some of their roads. Um, I'm sure they're looking at mitigation efforts to try to keep this at bay, which we've done some of. We see those seawalls down in Inalaha and in Talafofo Bay uh, that have done a good job of helping mitigate some of that. So just with that in mind, that those are gonna be some of the things coming up, I think it speaks well that in some of the supportive testimony, they say that you look for innovative solutions. And I would just say that it's important to keep that in mind as we're going forward, that the plan, any plan, really is a guideline. Society changes over time. The environment around us changes over time. Um, so maybe if you could just speak to your openness to understanding and working with those realities, um, and maybe talking a little bit about um, how you've approached some of the innovative solutions that you've come up with. Um, in building some of our buildings, you know, we've worked well with some of the other government agencies where they have guided us on environmental impacts. and. Um, so I have confidence that our authority will work well with the other government agencies in bringing together any environmental concerns. So, um, for example, you know, we just built a new Guam chamber building, and with that, it in, it, it included you know uh, flooding concerns. So we've addressed that. So there's a little bit of experience when it comes to. Uh, looking out for the environment. Sijuus Masi, that's good to hear. Um, and I'm a big believer in uh, problems and issues will always be with us, but that there's always a way to, to work with it and uh, come out ahead. Uh, there's always an answer, there's always a solution, there's always a way forward. And so those that are thinking along those lines as it uh, sounds like you are where you have been listening to those concerns and then making sure that the building uh, can go forward but taking those into concerns. Uh, that's what we're gonna be dealing with here. Yes, there will be the flood zone issues. Yes, there will be the rise in the sea level and we're on a low-lying coastal plain, but there's always gonna be ways to tackle this. And so it's just important to have board members that are uh, cognizant of that and then willing to come up with the innovative solutions so that, again, the whole community, the whole island benefits from what's going to be going on in Hagatnya. 
Are there any other questions that uh, the senators here have? Any other comments? Maybe just to follow up on when you asked about a conflict of interest, because the board is actually composed of Hakanya landowners, right? Some of them, and uh, not all. But that's that's why I guess it's very important that you just yeah, if you try to reach out and take care of all the Ghana residents, we still have residents. And part of the mission of this uh, authority was to increase people living in Ghana also, which I thought was interesting. But uh, yeah, w amidst all this commercial, um, so yeah, I just. I, it is a, it's, a, it's a strange thing because all of you on the board are going to be dealing with the same thing, that you're going to be, you know, with your own land and then yet creating a development projects all around that, right? So we're, I guess that's just one of the things that the public is looking at. So just to point that out, thank you. Sayyidina Mahasi, Senator. Is there anyone here who has not yet, yeah, not yet testify, who wishes to testify? There being none, this committee will conclude the public hearing for the confirmation hearing of Patricia Ann P. Ada to serve on the Board of Commissioners, Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. And uh, we will be Recessing just for a few minutes to start setting up for our next confirmation hearing. Sejus Masi to everybody for coming here. I know it takes time and effort, and so I really appreciate everybody's time and effort.
half a day and welcome back. We will now begin the uh, portion of the confirmation hearing for Joaquin A. Bellis to serve as the youth member on the Board of Commissioners for the Department of Parks and Rec. So we have here quite a few people uh, within the audience, again, recognizing that uh, former speaker Joaquin Ariola is here, and uh, we are very grateful for that. And quite a few people have signed up for your support, although I believe just one will be providing written and oral testimony. So we have here in support, uh, Ms. Clarissa Cruz, Ms. Nicolette Rap Rapola, Ms. Anita Ariola, uh, Mr. Miguel Ariola Bellis. Uh, sorry if I struggle a little bit with the signatures. Um, Mr. Kevin Cruz, Mr excuse me, Dr. Kirk Bellis, Mr. Ryan Ariola, Mr. Joaquin Ariola, Mr. Francisco Ariola, I believe, uh, Mr. Vince Ariola, Mr. Richard Ibanez, I'm not sure if he was able to stay. And then, um, I'm sorry that I'm struggling with reading a couple of the signatures, but just showing that there is quite a bit of support here. So I see that Mr. Joaquin Bellis has signed up for written testimony and oral testimony, so if you could come here and if there's anybody else who's providing support that is also giving testimony to please go ahead and sit at the table. Again, to restate this committee's general housekeeping rules, the conduct of the public hearing shall be as follows. Those testifying will be recognized in the order of the sign-up sheet. Written testimony may be read, and lengthy written testimony should be summarized to about five minutes. Written testimonies shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide our legislative staff with written testimony for photocopying. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once. Once you are done, you may be asked to remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony, as may be desired by the members of the panel. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. And when you are beginning, to please state your name for the record. So I want to recognize again that we have Senator Therese uh, Terlahi, who is with us here today and uh, Senator Tello Taitagui. So I see that we are three of the T's of the senators. We have Trilahi, Taitano, and Taitagui. So we're representing the T's very well. Okay, so with that, um, if we can go ahead and have uh, Mr. Joaquin Bellis provide his testimony. So just Masi and uh, Mananasi to this, this morning. Half a day, Senator Kelly Marsh Taitano and other members of the committee. My name is Joaquin Ariola Bellis. I am happy to be before you today as I seek your confirmation of my appointment as the youth member of the Board of Commissioners for the Department of Parks and Recreation. I want to serve on the Board of Commissioners because I would like to contribute back to my home, and I believe I have a great deal to contribute to the department. First is my work experience. I've been working since I was 14 years old. At that age, I was a busboy at a restaurant called Cajun Delight. There, I learned the importance of cleanliness and presentation. I believe that cleanliness and presentation are very important for how the department operates the 75 parks on the island. I then worked in a maintenance division at the Guam Legislature for a summer. During that time, I helped maintain and clean the old legislature building, as well as the groundskeeping for one part Plaza de España. In that job, I learned that the hard work it takes to maintain the government buildings and parks. I believe that my experience at the Guam Legislature helped me understand the hard work that the Department of Parks and Rec employees put in every day. The following summer, I worked at Cabris Marine Corporation as a tool room and supply attendant, and later worked full-time as a water combo apprentice. 
On some projects, we worked nine hour days for most of the week, the longest lasting for more than a month, well over a month. Here I learned the importance of hard work and perseverance. I believe I can bring these qualities to my work as a commissioner. Now I'm currently employed at the Bank of Guam in their Human Resources Department, excuse me, specifically in the Systems Division. I am also a student at the University of Guam studying for my bachelor's in business. At the Bank of Guam, we call it familia, but it could also be translated to fellowship. This is an important part of any work environment, and that's what I hope to bring to the Board of Commissioners. In addition to my work experience, I also bring along a long family tradition of public service. My grandfather, Joaquin Camacho Areola, was Speaker of the 9th and 10th Guam Legislatures, and my grandmother, Elizabeth Paris Areola, was a sixth-term senator in the Guam Legislature. My mother, father, aunts, and uncles have all served in various capacities of public service. Based on my experience and background, I believe it will contribute greatly to the Department of Parks and Recreation, and I humbly ask for your support. If confirmed as the youth member, I would like to suggest the following improvements. Prepaid passes that could be obtained online to use at museums or to rent facilities, including a small service fee to use the restrooms at the parks, which would help fund the facility to help, excuse me, keep it clean. I would also like to see a private-public partnership for companies to adopt parks and help maintain and operate it. Seduce Maasi. Sangnam Maasi for your testimony and uh, for highlighting some of your thoughts and some of your experience. I will now go ahead and uh, turn this over to the senators who are with me here today. So Senator Therese Terlahi or Senator Taidegui. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, and Hafide Joaquin. Hafide. This is a, a really nice write-up that you put together. It was written by yourself. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what can I, I, I particularly like the last paragraph on some ideas that you want to bring to the table um, and how, you know, prepaid passes online using, you know, technology um, to simplify and actually make things, a, a, you know, a little less expensive. To, so how do you feel about uh, cameras, uh, the use of surveillance cameras, and if you were given that uh, ability to purchase them, what would you do with them? I'd probably put them around some of the parks that, um, I, wanted, I don't want to say sketchy, but that are sometimes people feel unsafe in, in some areas, in some parks, and I feel like, uh, especially in the, the atmosphere that Guam has been in lately, with the, the, the rise in crime, and you see it in the papers, I feel like I would, I would put them all around just to help keep the parks safe. Do you think it's a good idea to use cameras? I do. I think it's a good um, way to prevent crimes okay. and just let those uh, would-be uh, perpetrators know, you know that we're watching. Thank you for that. And you know what, Ken, um, I, I know you're very capable of this position, and I hope that um, I can encourage you to stay on top of the ability of using surveillance cameras, CT cameras, I know that the Parks and Rec uh, received a grant uh, from the Interior, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to take about a, a year before they, um, they have it up and running, or at least be able to get the money. But in the meantime, there's a lot of things that you can do, you know, strategic planning and also um, uh, procurement process and what kind of cameras to use. I know that the directors, um, in fact, I was just speaking to him because they want to be able to use one of these cameras that were, um, uh, GPD was able to obtain some money just recently through a bill that was passed. And uh, I, I told him, well, if you need this one so desperately down at Matapang right now, then uh, you know, talk to the chief of police because now he has some money and, and this camera. So I think this would be a great project for you. <laughs> Sorry to push yeah. this on you. I know you probably have some other ideas. <laughs> no, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> okay, really but see, you're the techie guy. I mean, you're yeah. the youth. You know, you bring that technology. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the new guard. You know, yes. to to the board. And so I'm hoping you bring that technology there because um, it's it's very innovative. Um, it's cost efficient, and it's a route to go. So yeah, get with the director if you can and find mm -hmm. out about 
how um, I believe it's $170,000. I know it's not enough to cover all the parks, but um, that would be a great strategic plan yes. for you. And I also noticed, Joaquin, in, in your uh, packet, there's a section here, you certified OSHA? Yes, ma'am, uh, 40, OSHA 40, uh, I believe in 2016 at GCC. Wow, that's, that's, tell me a little bit about OSHA. So uh, I was certified um, to be, a, what's the word? Uh, excuse me, sorry. No, it's okay. So I would uh, know like the hazards of uh, the working environment that I was in at the time so they could hold me liable to any accidents that happened on the job site. That's great. You know, even though you're going to be the youngest member of this board, I bet you're the only one that's certified in that area. So you're going to bring, become a great asset to this board. You. And you have my full support. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you, okay. Senator. Okay. Senator Maasi, Senator Taidegui, and Senator Trilahi. Thank you. Thank you, um, Joaquin. And hello to all the family members. and friends and co-workers that are here. Um, sp Speaker Ariola, buenas. <laughs> um, can, uh, I, I like your testimony also, so thank you for it and for preparing for this hearing. And um, it seems that you're serious about this role, so I, I appreciate that. I also like that you started off with this importance of cleanliness and presentation. And so, of course, this is the big issue right now for the public regarding our, our facilities and, and, our, and for our tourists as well. So everybody's been working together to try to solve this and, and it evolves. So it was first that they were, the restrooms were broken, so we got them fixed. Then it was that they were just not being cleaned regularly, so we started to have that done. But now I think uh, vandalism has become really the biggest issue. So they were all fixed, now they're all broken, you know, and, and vandalism. So I think that discussion about security cameras and, and Parks and Rec is working on a plan. So the, I guess maybe you could help bring urgency to it all, right? That uh, this is the thing with the board, right? So that we want, especially youth members, when we put youth members on the board, we want to make sure that these boards are not op operating or that the, the directors and the agency itself are just not operating in a vacuum, that they are very, very aware every day of what, what the community feels, what they, what they need, what they want, and how they feel. So Parks and Rec, you know, it's, it's, it's got our, our regular parks, our beaches. It also has parks that are very much historic properties, ancient parks, I mean, ancient places that um, we are, of course, trying to um, preserve, but also to showcase, right, what, what Guam really is. And so I'm, I'm hoping you also, you know, uh, try to help them focus on that too, that these places are not just a place that's the same as every other place. It's very unique and they, they're, some of them are, you know, thousands of years old. The other thing about Parks and Rec is the rec, right? The recreation. Yes. So, yes, I, I, I appreciate that um, you, are, you know, because you are the, the youth member, I'm sure they're going to look to you to really be a, a strong voice in that. So you're going to have to push them, right? I, were you a paddler? Were you uh, ever a paddler? I was, n I was never a paddling, but I, a paddler, but I like to watch paddling. Okay, so, so did, I was never a paddler either, but when I watch paddling, I always felt bad for the paddlers because particularly when they're using Matopeng Beach, mm -hmm. right? It seems like some of the issues go on forever and ever. For example, the flooding in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So that there are issues that have like, jurisdictions with different agencies and that's sometimes where they get stuck right because it's not all parks and recs jurisdiction uh, some of it has to do with DPW some of it has to do you know with drainage systems down there but I think yes if you could just keep um, pursuing also those even though you run into walls don't give up just mm -hmm. keep you can keep pushing it because because I'm sure you've witnessed the same thing that I have in the different places that you've attended and, and you know, even, even just as a, a watcher that we go, we go periodically, but those who paddle go every day and I can't imagine why we keep, continue to let them live like that, right? Yeah. So I'm hoping the bathrooms that, 
that I, I guess that what we've been told that Matapeng and Ipau are the number, the two most vandalized places. Mm -hmm. They're also the places with regular maintenance, you know, regular repair, but almost regular vandalism. So yeah, um, data is going to help you with your job, right? Yes. Which are the most used? Why? Find out the whys so that you know, you know, what it is that they like about this place that you can then help, um, you know, the other places become like that too. The, the, um, I like your ideas on the bottom that you, you can, you suggested some ideas. After I read them, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, that seems so obvious. But then it reminded me of New York and I've only been to New York once, but, but maybe you've traveled and you've seen these that are incorporated other places and they make absolute sense. And it, it seems to be very convenient for the travelers, right? For our, yes. our visitors. And one of the reasons why I won't get a swimming pool pass is really in my mind, it's a hassle to go track it down, but it's a great idea to just get these online. Um, as to the private pu public partnership for companies to adopt a park, this is a popular idea and it's been done over the years also. And I just wanted to point a couple things out to you. So for example, EPAL, we've got, I think the adopt pavilions down there, different pavilions are adopted by different people. We've got other parks up in Derido adopted by like uh, lions clubs and things like this. But I just want you to please be careful with these parks when they adopt them, what you allow them to do, because it changes sometimes the nature of the park. These some, especially historic parks, parks that are historic areas or landmarks or anything, we don't want to turn them into commercial advertisement places. So that to me is, I'm, I'm sure businesses, they want to get involved and they'd like some advertising done, but we have to strike a balance between preserving the historic nature of a place or the recreational use of a place with, with what they are doing. There's also other measures that are before the legislature right now that you might have to weigh in on regarding, um, you know, using our parks for commercial enterprise. And, and so they try to sell that to us with, that's how they will take care of these parks. But it seems, you know, that we allow them to do exclusive business on the park, like vendors, I'm sure you've seen it in other countries that they, they do this. They would have the exclusive access as vendors to these, you know, to, to conduct business at these parks. And uh, in exchange, they will keep it clean. But I'm hoping that we can, you know, look, look for a way that, um, first of all, we have to incorporate the current money that Parks and Rec is going to receive from DOI. And that should make a huge change. With, and the other thing is like, you know, these parks, a lot of them are, if you think about the Southern parks and you know, Humanic, for example, they, they're part of the village, right? Mm -hmm. So I just think we should always incorporate, if we can, if they are village parks, that the village, you know, uh, sometimes they talk about cottage industries or just something that makes it so that as many people as possible can can feel comfortable there, as many people as possible. If, if there is going to be business conducted that perhaps you consider as many people as possible. That's, that's just my concern because I hate to see a park where the, you know, the people of Yamana, it's run by one company, one business company, and then you know, we, we just don't feel that welcome there. Yeah. Um, those are just some things, but I, I look forward to your service. I'm glad that you've been a hard worker, it seems, and you're continuing to pursue your studies. So I think, but please, uh, you know, you're serving on a board too, that's a government board. So it sounds to me like most of the members are going to be new. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, unique also, but so please, maybe you're, you're gonna be the oldest member on the board when they all come on, is that right? And you might be the first member <laughs> that I've seen. So. So you be the experienced one and you tell them what to do. No, but uh, just, yeah, don't let them, you know, tell you what to do because you're there for a reason. You're there for the youth perspective and don't let them because they're older or, or because, you know, they, they think they have more experience in these areas. That's not what we want. We want your perspective. We want your youth perspective. We want your new perspective and we want, you know, your, your ideas. So every idea is good. Put it on the table and, and if you have questions, make sure they answer them. Don't make a decision if you're not informed. You do your work and you ask the questions and if they try to avoid, you get back to them. 
and you, you get the information before you act because you're going to be the one accountable to the public as to why you acted this certain way, right? Mm -hmm. So why, why the restrooms in Matapan continue to be vandalized? They're going to start asking you now, not us anymore, you know, because of, we're going to have a board in place, but, but those types of things. So it's a, it's a big responsibility, and I thank you for stepping up to it. Thank you, Senator. Sijus Masi, Senator. And uh, so keeping along with our theme of having senators whose last name begins with a T, we have Senator Pito Trelahi who has joined us. Uh, Senator, would, do you have any comments or questions? For the youth, I do have a lot of comments, but let me just first, um, in sharing my thoughts, uh, I, wanted, I want to just uh, congratulate you for taking the challenge because I know that there is a lot of things that the youth uh, can, can do in as far as supporting. And they mentioned the parks and everything else. So what I want to ask is that if you need anything from any of the senators, come and approach us and we'll try our very, very best to support you in all matters concerning you know, uh, uh, supporting the programs that you have in mind and all that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Sainamaasi, Senator. So as I begin, I just want to mention that I know your parents and I know some of your other family members. Uh, I've known them for quite some years and in a variety of ways. So I just want to make that clear. And I want to point out, as has been discussed uh, by some of the senators already, that the parks is on its way to progress. So it's already made a lot of great strides. It's already opened up the two pools that were closed in Dededo and Hagatnya. We have community members that are now utilizing them on a regular basis. We have a $5.6 million grant from the Department of Interior that you will be part of overseeing as a board member, uh, how that is implemented and making sure that it meets its timelines and its intended goals. Some of that will involve security cameras, as Senator Tidegui had mentioned, uh, amongst other things that it's going to be doing. It's going to be uh, repairing benches and bathrooms uh, pretty much throughout the island um, for quite a number of parks as well as other work. We have a cleaning contract so the Department of Parks and Rec told me just before he left today that it will be starting tomorrow so I think that will be a huge relief uh, for the community at large that will start seeing that be activated and that comes from a long period I believe I've been told that uh, that cleaning contract had not been able to be finalized. It sat through and, and just had not been able to be finalized all of last year. So the fact that we have that now in place as of tomorrow, that will be something that's really positive. And um, I've been meeting with entities like GVB, so the Adopt-a-Park program, there were very good comments there uh, previously by Senator Chirlahi, and part of what we want to do is strengthen that program. And so I think, again, you'll be very key in some of that, being able to be part of those discussions and uh, creating that relationship between GVB and the Department of Parks and Rec, which is a very historic relationship. They go hand in hand, and uh, what they do overlaps in so many ways. So they've talked about, or we've talked about, uh, coming up with a Facebook page and ways of recognizing those that are adopting a park so that there's incentive, there's appreciation for them. We've talked about volunteer programs and so forth. And as Senator Chirlahi mentioned, it's so important to keep the nature of the parks in many ways intact. They're part of the village. They may have history unto themselves. And we have seen some changes in some places where maybe the community members don't even feel like they should be visiting that park anymore. And so we really want to make sure that we're finding ways for them to continue 
using our, our parks and our beaches. Uh, right now, they're a heavily used resource, and we love that. It's a part of our lifestyle to spend as much time at our parks and, and beaches as we have. So with that, um, the next thing that I wanted to look at is just discussing, as has been touched on by yourself and some of the other senators, that I think that you bring a lot of positives with you. Your experience in the field of maintenance, that is a major part of what the parks does. They have a crew that goes out there and maintains these very diligently, but they have specified that they want to bring in new employees and they're looking for those new employees to be younger um, if possible, if, if it works out that way, because they want them to be a part of the park family for a long time. So that again may be something that you can help them with. Um, you've had your family has experience with public service, uh, with OSHA being very, very detail-oriented, and I think that that will serve as well as we implement that $5.6 million mm -hmm. grant of capital improvement projects. And I also like the ideas of prepaid passes, perhaps, uh, and having them available online. So those kind of out of the box thinking or thinking about how we can update and better develop some parts of the Department of Parks and Rec program are really important. And so I just want to mention also that I think there's great opportunity and again I think you'll be a perfect partner for this. The War in the Pacific Park that we have here uh, has a lot of outreach components to it. They have a junior park ranger program, so I think you could really be part of working with that war in the Pacific Park and seeing how you might be able to work with them if there's anything that could be brought over or some, how you, it could be a joint program together. Um, that could be something you could explore. I'm interested in developing a service learning component. We have our Island youth, every single one of them has to get 70 hours of service learning. And so we can easily put together a service learning package that is tied into the parks. I think that has a lot of value. And then there are some plans that are underway to certain degrees. And I think that you will have some very important perspectives to offer. There's a recreational water use master plan that's supposed to be either, um, I believe it's just updated, to be updated. But that there's already one in place, so perhaps looking at that and understanding it from the youth perspective and, and how they're utilizing the park, the parks could come in really uh, as an important factor. And then they're going to be updating the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. So again, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for you to be able to weigh in with your particular perspective. The appointment is for four years. So um, if you'd like to address that a little, little bit about your willingness to put in the time and have the commitment over the long haul, over those four years, if you'd like to speak about that a little bit. Uh, to me, like for your commitment is, seems pretty little when coming to my home. You know, I wanna make, Guam is my home and I, I, I don't mind spending even a lifetime, I guess, uh, contributing to it, making it better. Sainama Asi for that. And I don't know how widely it is spread throughout the youth community, but it seems like there have been quite a few youth who have that passion and that dedication. And so it's very good to see that you also have that. And I think that there may be ways for you to harness that and put that desire that they have to do good for the community, to make sure that our environment is going to be there for your children and your grandchildren uh, to appreciate and value and have 
just like we have had all these years. Um, so there may be some really good opportunities for you to really harness that maybe it's a movement that's going on amongst youth your age and, and around that age. Um, so for me, that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to go over. I know that I said a lot to, to absorb, but as Senator Pito said, any time that you have thoughts or ideas or want to have discussion, I'm sure that any of us senators here or throughout the body would be very willing to listen to you and provide support where we can. Did anybody have any closing comments or questions? You know, Ken, being a, uh, appointed to uh, or nominated to uh, be a board member of commissioners, I'll tell you, man, that's one of the highest appointments a youth can get. So I trust that you're going to do good, and I think with your record, I think um, that's where the, uh, the appointment or the nomination came by because of your, uh, your talent and the things that you, you uh, have inspired to, to really go forward and uh, uh, do the program uh, for, the, for the youth under the Parks and Recreation. So thank you again. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you, you got my support. Thank you, Senator. So I just want to uh, close with saying that I think should going forward, um, I believe that uh, there's been quite a bit of sh support shown here. And if everything goes through in as this goes forward and you are nominated and become part of the board, that you're going to be there for an exciting year of progress. As I mentioned, we've already seen so many things happen. We have our pools, we have cleaning happening, and all sorts of other things that are in the works. I think that it's going to be an exciting year where we're going to see our parks getting back to where we want them to be. So, Sejus Maasi for everybody being here, and um, I just want to say to have a, a good rest of your day, but then I'll close it out formally. So is there anyone here who has not yet testified who wishes to testify? There being none, the committee will conclude the public hearing for the confirmation hearing of Joaquin A. Bellis to serve as the youth member on the Board of Commissioners, Department of Parks and Recreation. For both his and Patricia and uh, Ada's confirmation hearing, um, I want to send out a reminder that the committee will receive, will continue to receive testimonies over the next few days. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Guam, <laughs> I got revitalization, self-determination and regional affairs, and submit it via email to office senator kelly at guamlegislature.com or my office is located here at the second floor of the guam congress building it could be uh, brought here and hand delivered or mailed to us our address is 163 challenge santo papa hagatnya guam 96910 Again, Sidzuis Maasi, everyone, for your attendance and participation in today's hearing. The public hearing has now ended, and the time is 9.58.